Hi again, welcome to this follow-up video on Xiaomi's Box S third generation. You can find the link to my original one and all resources I'll be referencing in the description below. I wasn't impressed with this as a Google TV box, but now that installing Coralek is possible, let's see how it fares. I bought this box with my own funds. This is not a sponsored video in any way and opinions are my own. Showing the final steps here to creating a Coralek USB stick. One cool development is that it's no longer necessary to add the dovi.ko file for Dolby Vision like before. CE developers are now using it from the Android partition of the internal flash drive. We're now ready to set up Corelec. For now, I recommend using a gigabit Ethernet USB hub with the CE flash drive plugged in and a USB keyboard also plugged in. I shot this a little sped up, but you'll need to now become a developer by clicking on the Android build number five times. I already did this. Now you're able to enable developer options and you'll also need to enable USB debugging. Next, note down the IP address of this box, then head over to a computer on the same network. On your computer, establish an ADB connection to the Xiaomi box, I did this earlier, and issue the command to update reboot. That's it. The Xiaomi box is now rebooting into Corelec. Showing this sped up, it does take a while, so need to wait. Showing initial CE and Kodi settings. This box is connected to my 4K projector, but the system resolution defaults to 1080p and this causes problems, at least initially, as you'll see. Under Kodi, System Settings, CE, we have Dolby Vision options as expected. I left the mode to TV LED even though this box can't do real TV LED. Wax Dolby Vision fell. Full enhancement layer support. Still, what's unique about the Xiaomi Box 3rd Gen is that at present, it's the only media player powered by the new AM Logic S905X5M chip to support Dolby Vision with Coralec. The reason you need a USB keyboard is there's no IR support nor Bluetooth support as of this recording. I left the CPU governor at performance. Later, when the box was sluggish or would crash or freeze, I tried on demand, but that seemed to make no difference. So let's start testing this box with local network speeds, Wi-Fi first. We need to install the Network Tools program add-on from the CE repository to conduct iPerf testing. So you'll see why I recommended using a USB Gigabit Ethernet hub. This box is equipped with Wi-Fi 6, but at this point, Wi-Fi speeds are truly awful. At least on the Google TV side, I was able to get about 360 megs per second. Also not good for Wi-Fi 6, but at least better than this. I expect Wi-Fi performance to get better as CE devs continue working on this box, but until then, use a USB Ethernet hub. Because as you can see that over wired, speeds are closer to what we'd expect, and this is good enough even for the highest bitrate UHD rips. Now let me add one of my network shares and see how fast the library scan is. I'd say decent, but not as fast as even other AM Logic based boxes. As this is continuing to scan my library, let me navigate around Kodi and show you how responsive this box is. It's pretty responsive, but as you'll see shortly, you run into freezes, hangups, lockups, or even crashes. So far so good, browsing quickly here. And there we go, it locks up and crashes at this point every time I tried it. The box didn't crash, it appears Coralec or Cody did. After a couple of repeat attempts, I tried navigating down to up instead, hoping to avoid the issue. And moving slowly. Oh. 
Okay, success with playback of this HDR10 clip, but this wonky and distorted picture. So, I was able to fix playback of all 4K without adversely affecting other resolution videos like 1080p by changing the system resolution to 4K and, of course, as you can see, needing to reboot to have the UI look right again. Okay, now going back to retry that Sony Cam 4K HDR10 clip. Success, yay, and playback is now perfect. Now playing the famous Dolby Vision Profile 7 Fell test clip. We know there's no Fell support, but DV gets properly triggered and plays fine with its base layer and RPU, as you can see. Speeding video up to the 80 second mark. Alas, no silhouette of women as we'd have already seen with Fell support on the few compatible Core like NG AM Logic boxes out there. Playing a DVE Profile 5 clip, P5 is what all streaming services use, and this plays perfectly. Now let's play what really counts, a DV Profile 7 UHD title. Speeding it up to get to the main opening scene. No felt support okay, but the picture looks drop-dead gorgeous with the new Dolby Atmos mix on this movie playing perfectly. I gotta say, I was very tempted to stop testing and just sit back and rewatch this movie for um, the 20th or 30th time, looking better than it ever has on this new UHD release. Sorry, gotta mute the audio so I don't get dinged for copyright crap. One last Dolby Vision test to show you, the new Profile 10, which is essentially DVP-8 with AV1 codec. No way! You fish here too? This and all AV1 up to 4K play perfectly. What you using there? Carolina rig? That's good for bottom fishing. Next up, HDR10+, Plus, which also plays perfectly with proper dynamic metadata shifts, as you'll see during the quick tones in this test clip. Speeding it up a bit to the tone. And there. Speeding up the next tone. And there again, as expected. As a FYI, this box under Corelec and Google TV cannot handle most 8K. I tested HEVC and AV1 and both froze the box, requiring unplugging the power and back in. One more HDR10 Plus test with the less common profile A. There's nowhere like Earth. It's a beautiful planet. This plays perfectly. Drink, food is there for us. We have this life support system that's like perfectly designed to support billions of humans. And it's pretty amazing to see how much effort we had to put into designing and building the space station. I tested all files you see here. This box under Corelec and Google TV has no problems playing any AV1 and VP9 up to 4K, showing one of them quickly here.
Next, let me show you high bitrate playback. Let's go right to the most demanding one, the 400 meg per second jellyfish clip. It plays surprisingly perfectly using my USB gigabit ethernet hub, even though if you recall, using it showed speeds around 340 megs per second earlier. Letting this play through, you'll see no stuttering. Smooth playback. This bodes well for even the highest of bitrate UHD disc rips. With MPEG-2 and VC1, no problems with playback with Coralic. I tested all the clips you see. Let me show you one that's problematic for some media players. 1080 interlaced VC1 video. This too plays without issue. Showing one more VC1 24p movie that stutters toward the end on the Google TV side. With Coralek on this box, this VC1 also plays without problems. It would already be starting at this point on the Google TV side, but not here. What was pleasantly surprising was being able to play all these CPU intensive clips, especially this Chroma 420 high bitrate MPEG-2 satellite capture, which most media players just can't play. It's stuttering here, but nonetheless playing better than I expected. This next Grammy moment features two songs and brings together a global pop sensation from Canada and two superstar DJs. All these anime samples play perfectly, including this one with heavy subtitles. This one can trip up media players with lots of frame skips. <laughs> The heavy subtitles bit is about to appear, but this plays fine. Finally, HD and object-based audio. I played most of the files you see here and each played perfectly in the right format and without any dropouts. Let me share three of them, starting with True HD Dolby Atmos. Like in the Sound of Music UHD playback earlier, Atmos here plays perfectly as well. I also tested about 15 minutes of different movies with True HD, Atmos, DTS HD MA, and DTS X, and all played without issues. Next up, showing a quick DTS-X video clip playback, which also plays perfectly. It surrounds and connects us with everything we experience. To date, this hasn't truly been recreated in a cinema. Your living room, 
car or mobile device. We set out to change this. DTSX immerses you in multi-dimensional sound. Finally, when I first attempted to play these two 7.1 PCM test files, it caused Cody Corelec to freeze then crash. But third time was the charm. As you've already seen, there are definitely stability issues and bugs with this box at this point. As a CE device, the Xiaomi Box S 3rd Gen is already better than it was initially, and hopefully CE developers will continue to make it better and more reliable. Same video with PCM 7.1, this time playing just fine. Okay, that's the end of the AV Media playback test that I wanted to share. Now showing dual boot by rebooting to the internal flash drive with Google TV and timing how long this takes. This is below average compared to several other AM Logic boxes I've tested. About 30 seconds is better, or ideally a bit less. Now let's boot back to Corelec on the USB stick and time how long that takes. Navigating through settings like I'm doing to get here and restart is one way, but the better way is to install this app launch it and restart right from the Google TV home screen. You can ignore the weird color issue here. It's happening because I left always HDR enabled on the Google TV side. It should be set to auto for most use cases, no matter which OS. Now this is more like it booting to CE from Google TV. I and other users have provided logs to CE devs to help with development. So that's it for this Xiaomi Box S 3rd Gen as a dual boot option and more so as a DV capable Cora like option. As you can see, Portish was already on it as I got ready to post this video, which is amazing. CE Dev's efforts bode well for this box, being a strong modern playback option for Kodi local media fans who also want Google TV and premium apps, especially at the $50 to $78 price range we're seeing.